Today I'm going to talk about the structure and function of the antibodies. Now these antibodies also go by the name of immunoglobulin. Now in this part of the video, my main focus would be on structure and I will briefly talk about the function, but I will cover function in more detail in the coming videos in the next video. So let's just talk about the structure first. Now you can see the Y shaped structure here. They are actually the two large chains of the antibodies. They look like the alphabet Y and these are actually the polypeptide chains and they are the heavy ones. They are the heavy chains of the antibodies. And as you can see on your screen, they are bended at a specific region. Now I will talk about about this particular region in a moment but for right now I'm trying to keep the things simpler so this is the polypeptide chain which is known as the heavy chain and now we also have some other chains they are relatively shorter chains but these are known as the light chain and for the purpose of illustration for illustration purposes you can also see the color difference that the light chains have light color so it's just for the purpose of illustration and you can see that all the four chains whether they are two light chains or two heavy chains they are forming the complete structure of antibodies and in the later part of this particular lecture i will tell you that they unite with each other they are bound to each other with the help of disulfide bridges or disulfide bond so this particular heavy chain and this particular light chain they have disulfide bridges within them and similarly these two heavy chains are also bound to each other with the help of disulfide bridges or the disulfide bond and same goes for this particular union the union between this heavy chain and this light chain so that was just a basic idea behind the structure of the antibodies now let's move towards some other things in the previous videos in b cell activation and complement fixation or complement cascade we talked about this unique binding or unique complex or union between something known as antigen and antibodies so we just talked about the structure of antibodies briefly now let's just focus on the other counterpart which is the antigen now here you can see different colors all these things are representing antigens but if you look at their bottom portion if you look at their lower portion all these antigens have their own unique pattern or shape let's talk about this green one the lower portion of this particular antigen is looking like a triangle so you can see all these antigens have their unique pattern or shape and these antigens interact with different kinds of antibodies and you can see the basic structure of antibody here with its heavy chain and light chain so now let's just compare these things with some specific things that we commonly use like we can compare these antigens with the keys now you can see the picture the top portion of the keys different keys now they have almost a similar structure but if we talk about their bottom portion if they belong to different kinds of doors if they are there to open different kinds of locks or doors they would have their own unique pattern all these keys have their own unique pattern and quite similarly these antigens here these proteins these antigens here they have their unique pattern yes they try to interact or bind with these antibodies but for each antigen there is a unique antibody or only a unique antibody will bind a unique antigen we can also compare it with the lock and key model of the enzymes so if we are comparing antigens with the keys it's obvious that these structures these antibodies can be compared with different kinds of locks and you can see different color locks there like the green one blue red and so on and it's pretty obvious that this red key is there to open this particular red lock so that the door can be open and similarly blue one is for this particular lock and so on, green one for this so if we compare keys with the antigens then we can also link or compare antibodies with these locks i hope you can get the idea now let's focus on this yellow one if we look at different kind of patterns here this is the most suited antigen that would fit in this particular antibody or it will interact with this particular antibody as you can see here this yellow antigen has the portion that is 
suitable or compatible with this particular portion of the antibody but if we talk about some other antigen like this one if we try to fix this particular antigen in this antibody it won't fit right so here we need to familiarize ourselves with two terms those two terms they sound alike they have the common suffix the first one is epitope now the portion of the antigen that is unique that has a specific pattern this particular region is known as epitope but if we talk about the portion where these things actually fit the portion or part of the antibody that is there for fixing these antigens this particular portion is known as paratope so there is epitope and paratope there is this concept of epitope and paratope and this paratope also goes by the name of antigen binding site so you can get the idea why one portion is known as the epitope and other one is known as paratope so moving on towards the next thing we have this mickey mouse face now it's quite strange how can we relate how these two things are related to each other the face of the mickey mouse and the antibodies so here again look at the structure of antibody here you can see the color combination is different and we have these light chains and the heavy chains which are in black color mostly now if we try to fit this particular antibody within the face of the mickey mouse in this manner now the portion that are present within the ears of mickey mouse or this yellow structures or the yellow portions they are actually called the variable region because they vary antibody to antibody every different antibody has its unique variable region and similarly the portion that is covered by this face or the red circle this particular portion of antibody is actually the constant region and it is same if we move from one kind of antibody to other kind of antibody so i hope this silly idea or this face the idea of mickey mouse face makes things easier for us let's move towards the next thing now in the previous part of this video i compared antibodies with the locks the handles the doors locks now if we again talk about that particular analogy or that particular comparison you can see that we can compare the constant portion of the antibody with these handles and the rest of the portion except the lock and if we specifically talk about the locks those locks the blue lock green purple and then we have this red lock they can be compared with the variable region of the antibody if this is the whole antibody this particular portion here that is there for the insertion of key that particular portion is the variable region we can compare that particular portion with the variable region of the antibody and similarly rest of the portion can be compared with the constant region and as soon as we insert particular key in these locks it will open a particular door this handle will be able to open a particular door quite similarly when an antigen binds with this variable region then the whole antibody is able to perform certain different counter measure against any particular pathogen so the union is quite important the union between antigen and antibody only then our immune system would be able to fight against pathogen or deal with any sort of pathogen so i hope you can get the idea next we can move towards the abc of antibodies now if we talk about the abc of antibodies you can see different things here the a b and c we have to again take help of different kind of antibody and we are skipping few things here now in the last part of this lecture i talked about this y shape structure now these are the two heavy chains as well as we also have the light chains if we talk about this particular portion here it is bended from this particular region it has a bend and this bend region is connected with each other or this particular region is known as hinge region and i have already told you about whether we talked about the two heavy chains or one light chain and a heavy chain they are bound to each other they bind with each other with the help of disulfide bridges now we know that these are the two light chains with their respective variable portion as well as the constant portion and then we also have the heavy chains with their smaller relatively smaller variable region and they have a lot of constant region the first one second one and third one now this particular portion here this is known as c h1 why so because c means constant h means heavy so this is the first 
CH1 or the first constant region of heavy chain. And then similarly, we can call it the CH2 and then we have CH3 here. Some antibodies do have this another region, additional CH4 region. We will talk about them in a moment. And similarly, if we talk about the purple and the blue portion of the light chain, this particular thing is known as VL, the variable region of the light chain. And similarly, the things are pretty obvious that this particular portion would be called as or would be tagged as CL, the constant region of the light chain. And this particular portion where the antigens bind, this particular portion is known as hypervariable region. Now let's come towards the ABC of antibody. Now the upper portion, the whole light chain as well as this particular portion of the heavy chain. This portion together makes a region which is known as FAB region, which is actually AB. AB stands for antigen binding. So this is a fragment or portion of the antibody that is involved in antigen binding or in other words, it is the antigen binding site. So I hope this concept is clear. F is for fragment and AB is for the antigen binding site. So this is a fragment that is responsible for antigen binding. That's why it is known as FAB. And then if we talk about the rest of the portion, it is known as FC. This particular region is involved in complement fixation. We already talked about complement fixation that it has many pathways. But if we specifically talk about the classical pathway, then this particular region comes into action. It is there to bind combine or start the complement cascade which will ultimately kill the pathogen by creating hole or pores or it can also go for the option of opsonization. So actually this F is for fragment and this C is for crystallizable. This is a fragment that can be crystallized. So it is the fragment that is crystallizable and we can also memorize it that way that this is the portion that is there for complement fixation or complement activation. I hope you are able to grasp the concept of the ABC of antibodies. So now we can move towards this last thing 